Hey, uh, what's up, guys? Uh, day three here. Just uh, did a little practice session after my uh, race prep video yesterday. I'm just uh, I noticed the inside wear, um, the inside of the tires is wearing a little bit more than the middle. So yeah, I just took some camber out of the car. Kind of uh, gave it a more planted feeling, but this is a first time getting back in the car today, so I'm gonna get up to a pace here. But he took a little different route there. And as you can see, I'm practicing with other cars on track because it's just always good to do that. The more you can, the better. Usually I like to not do it in the beginning just so I can get a good baseline down. But once you start getting a decent set going, then. I think it's a good idea to drive with other cars on track. You might actually drive the car just a little bit differently and see where you might need to make an adjustment or two. Maybe it behaves a little bit differently through the carousel when you're right behind a car because you don't have quite the air on the nose. Next submission. Right. 
Now on the dirt, coming back on. Keep going. I actually start keeping it in first gear through there. I was able to get a nice little shot of acceleration out of that corner. Just like, no, initially I was doing second gear through here, and now I'm doing first gear. Probably purple. So right now my focus is a, like a six. <laughs> Just to give you guys some guys some kind of idea where my head's at right now. Trying, trying to pull it together here. Probably my fault though, the way I'm driving the corner. First gear is better through there. I think that's what I was saying yesterday in my race prep video though. Just because the hotter weather, just that taller gear is too much push in the car. 
nice thing about first gear through here is it really does help me get into that corner a lot better. I actually got out of that corner kind of horrible, but if I do it right in first gear, it should gain me like another tenth, it seems like. Might be my personal best, yes, yeah, my personal best. It's uh, lap six. Or lap, I think it's the fifth flying lap. There we go. Oh man. I think I might gain a half a second on my best lap or uh... We'll see. Let's see if I can put together a lap here. Twenty nine point six seven. Yeah, swung out too wide. Very cost myself like a tenth and a half. I was trying to just get a really wide line, but it just took too long to turn back in. The car never turned back in. Hmm. I'm just going with it. <laughs> just kind of subconsciously, uh... Use second gear there to help me turn a little bit. Oh, too fast. I think they're gonna slow you up a bit. Dang, I'm just getting on a roll too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can run like a 24 4, 24 3. With this current tire fuel load situation. One thing I was thinking about sometime was just about kind of maybe stiffening up the springs and see how the car feels. Just do a little bit more of a uh, spring imbalance. Just maybe make the uh, rears a little bit stiffer in the fronts. Just to get a little bit more rotation. Just to get that front end down a little bit longer. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. Okay. See, these are more even now. Um, before I change the camber, this would be like 93, and that'd be 94. See, that's 93, 94, so. Could probably take another. Actually, I'm going to leave those right there, because those temps are pretty close. Again, I'm just. Oh. Someone did mention, I can't remember if it was on the YouTube comment or my recent comment, but they're saying somebody who's... Bottom line is that 
Somebody was saying that the gurney flap made their car more stable, which it does, and it just reminded me, like, hey, maybe I should try it, because I kind of always just neglect that thing. So let's do that first before I do the springs and see if uh, how that feels, if it slows me down significantly or if it actually speeds me up because I have more grip through the corners. So we shall see. Oh, cool paint job on huh? those stripes. curious about is actually how much does this slow me down on the straightaways because it's gonna help me through the corners so is it really like that big a deal right now like this is where it's gonna affect me most like right there oh <laughs> somebody just texted me <laughs> I looked down at the text and I found the biggest curb on the track <laughs> That's why you don't uh, text and drive, kids. That was my street car. My head would have just gone through my steering wheel right now. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. What this will do is cause more understeer though, which is already a problem. And if I'm being like honest, what I really should do is get my optimal lap. Well, I'm pretty sure my optimal lap with that previous set's at 29.3.94 right there. So if this goes faster than that, Pretty confident it's a good setup change but the drawback is this thing's probably gonna push a little bit more now right, let's see if it does or not it's not gonna be noticeable in the first couple of laps because the front tires are got all their sticky on them still they come up around like lap five or six but the whole, you know, more wing, less wing debate is, uh, it's really just the, the trade-off between corner speed versus straight line speed. And if you're only losing a couple hundreds on the straight line, but you're gaining tenths on the corners, then it's pretty obvious you should go with the uh, more wing. It's the other way around, it's pretty obvious you should go with less wing. It's just, you know, it takes testing, just takes the time and effort to actually try the different wing settings and see what actually does better for you once you have a really good handle on the track. It's kind of something you want to do toward the end of your set, but I just want to do this now before I start throwing a whole new set of springs on it. But it's one of those things, you, you start off with just, okay, you think about the track, how many turns does it have versus straightaways and then that kind of in your head you kind of do rough calculation of what degree of wing you should want like maybe say road atlanta maybe well road atlanta in these cars is no wing um but in my ford gt and the gt2 i ran full wing but a lot of people that'd be like a half wing track just thinking about it you know off the top of your head like okay well it's got the s's so you do a little wing for that but it's got that long straight so then you don't okay this guy's just doing his <laughs> having a grand old time so yeah you go through the s's you need a little bit of wing for that but then you got the straightaway so you don't want a lot of wings so you take it so just like common sense you'd think you'd want like a medium wing well through testing i found out a full wing is better so that's what i'm saying you start off with like your best guesstimate and you get the car set up and then 
Towards the end is when I suggest you uh, really start messing, fine tuning the wing or trying to see what a f light, uh, no wing is compared to full wing, compared to medium wing, compared to gurney flap, like what I'm doing right now. And I'm just not paying attention enough, but it's kind of okay because I kind of do just need to do three or four laps before I can really start seeing how this car handles. Then get back into that same lap area I was before when I started running those uh, 29s. So it looks like if I'm paying attention, I should be able to run 29s for at least the first couple laps. Yeah, good Cyril Thomas behind me is a good fast rough driver, so. Should be keeping me honest here in a little bit, if I can keep my attention a little bit better. I think I've noticed I'm starting to be able to focus more. I'm just crazy day at work, so I'm trying not to. Mine just starts daydreaming and thinking about stuff that happened at work. Which is rather annoying. Oh, looks like uh, Cyril had some uh, technical difficulties back there. Mindless corner, that is. I don't understand it. Feel more stability in the room for sure, especially in low-speed kerners, which is kind of a trip. High-speed corners, I really don't notice a difference because I think the car was just already so well planted. The only parts of the track I was really having trouble with low-speed corners, but for some reason this uh, gurney flap seems to really kick in in the low-speed stuff. I'll give it some more laps. I mean, I'm on uh, what? This is my second flame lap. Third lap total. Ooh, yeah, see. Okay, we're gonna have to give it a couple more laps like there before I get too excited about how good that felt. That felt pretty good. On your lap. And in third, I should have been able to stab right there and it's stuck. Clear if you need it. 17. I wonder what his other times are. By the way, he's driving. I'm guessing he's running 31, 32. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah, 32 fours. Recognizing a Maca. I say, I say Maca just to make people mad. By the way, <laughs> this is my Maca MP4, boys. Call it the Bruce.
push him, push him, push him. One on the right side, clear. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I love it. That was so just. That was like 95% lock. It was flooring and hitting the rev limiter in first. Wow, it was a little sideways. Just. It's a beautiful thing. 31.4. Beautiful. Nine. Well, I don't feel like it's giving me substantial speed. I know it's not helping my oversteer situation. Are so much fun to drive. Easily the most fun car I've ever driven in my life. Even better in the Ford and its glory days, because unfortunately in its glory days the tire model still had some pretty big flaws in it where you couldn't do this just power sliding. And I didn't have the wheel I did now, so maybe it could have been the wheel. Sorry, I can't really the tire model without having a good enough wheel to really test it. But that being said, this is the most fun driving experience I've ever had on a video game. In my entire life. That's like, I don't even want to know how many hours of racing I've done in my life. We're talking like since the age of... Oh, I had an Intellivision as my first gaming system. Go look that up. Intellivision. So, this is even better. What I'm saying, this is even better than an Intellivision, believe it or not. I just don't know. Alright, this is right around that period I was running those uh, 29, so let's see what I can do here now, do a little focusing. Definitely more secure in the rear end over there. Ah, mistake back there. too fast.
turn, you hunk of junk. Don't hit anything. Oh, wall ride. Oh, wall ride 360. Get some. Back it down a little <laughs> bit, bud. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's just, that's how you wreck right there. What I was trying to do is I was trying to shoot this gap. I was trying to shoot across over here. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's a pretty sweet move. So I just don't know. So what I'm going to have to do is take it back off and run some more laps because I just, I don't know right now. Let's see how this feels. See how wall ride, bro? So that's just kind of how I reaffirm decisions, like, uh, when you're not really sure what felt better, just go back and forth. It's time consuming, but it's what you have to do to be really sure what you liked better and what worked for you better. Uh, I went down to third for no reason. On your right, go there, clear. Like Nathan's in the uh, Maca right now. Is tight through there, but that's something I can fix with the uh, springs and rake and that stuff. So, The track's fine, the layout's what's horrible. It's the two chicanes at the end is what kills it. The last chicane, I just can't for the life of me decide whether I ever thought that was better than just going another 100 meters down the track in the right turn.
I don't think it really does anything for me. Let's see, pay more attention to these low speed corners again, see if that was in my head earlier, if that was just me forgetting about when he came for adjustments. I made last night. Jeez. That guy's a menace. Usually if you're bad that that bad on a track, it's probably a better idea just to test by yourself so you're not screwing with the practice server so bad. And once you can get around the track by yourself without wrecking, then I think it's alright for you to go drive with other people on track. You can't get around the track yourself without wrecking. It's probably not safe to get on the track with a whole bunch of other cars. Just a thought. 30.5. Getting to the point where I have no fear of just letting it hang out. I just wish it wasn't this hard. <laughs> Much more enjoyable when it was 10 degrees cooler. Now me getting loose is just most of the one for my core. I haven't even been paying attention, but my lap times are probably all over the place.
I do want to start messing with the springs though. I, just, I want better rotation out of the end of that corner. I don't want it to push like that. A lot of that does have to do with my line, but I want the car to be more forgiving. The line I'm running is not like a super aggressive line. The car really should be. Again, that was probably my fault because I was thinking about work again, but... I understeer for my liking. Such a fun corner in this cart. Just, you know, just kind of get it straight and just put the throttle on it. This is four wheel slide up over the crest. And you did it, right? Thing was actually sliding that whole time. But there's a little slide going on. kind of picking up on that. My bad, bro. My bad. So, no gurney flap. That's what I just learned. Alright, 45. I haven't even started my. This is gonna be a longer video today. I gotta mess around with these springs now. This is kinda more of the pace, like, I just upload setups and stuff like that. And don't make videos. Sometimes this is what I'm doing. Go up. Great.
So I'm going up 100 pounds in the front. I'm going up. Hundred and fifty pounds in the rear. Um, the difference between these two last time was point two. It's basically the same. Also, going to put a little bit more rake in it. Just a little. So, I made the rear springs stiffer by fifty pounds um, relative to the uh, front springs. And I just want the rear just to be, I just want to see what happens now when the rear is a little bit stiffer in the front. Um, in general, it's going to cause the weight transfers to the front to happen quicker. And it's going to cause weight transfer under braking. That's usually that. And then when the weight starts shifting backwards, it's going to shift the weight back slower. Because you have stiffer springs back here giving more resistance. And you have softer springs up here giving less resistance. And it's uh, vice versa under braking. Um, car probably did go up a couple millimeters overall ride height. And then I just gave it a little bit more rake, pretty much for the same reasons that I uh, staggered the spring adjustments. Just to get that weight transfer a little bit more front dominant. See if that'll help with uh, rotation through the middle and exit. And hopefully it's not too aggressive to the point where it starts making me oversteer on entry. And I'm hoping a little bit stiffer springs ha helps me on um, the front end turn a little bit better in uh, the fast uh, arrow sections. Yeah, it's still pushing pretty bad right there. Because usually if you have stiffer front springs, it uh, allows the downforce to push the tires into the pavement a little bit harder. Or it's more responsive. It pushes it down the same, but it's not it doesn't have quite a mushy feeling. It's a front end a much more uh, darty feel. for that corner though, fortunately. That's just dangerous. Makes it worse for everybody. It doesn't help him because he just got under pressure, drove way too hard, went off the track, didn't hurt anything. Uh, slowed down my f lap if I were not, and you know, in theory that could have been a hot lap. He slowed me down. He pretty sure got an accident with the other guy right behind him. So it's no benefit to that. And he's got people talking to him, but for the wrong reasons. doesn't turn like I want it to. Hey, I won't 
like that push. Didn't want to go purple. Huh? I felt fine, I just had to be patient. Oh, first <laughs> hit that right like one out of every hundred laps. That was one of them. Car does it have a little bit better feel to it, um, more responsive, which isn't too surprising since I pretty much had the softest springs I could put on the car. Just don't know if it's for the better yet. It's a positive feeling though. Just wondering if it maybe went, maybe if I go down 50 pounds in the front and rear, if that'll just be like the perfect balance. Seems like I'm naturally getting through that corner better now. Thank you. Uh, keep going, keep going. So much fun. So much fun. What that car control really allows you to be able to do is have more confidence in it, so you can just step on it, you know, even if it does break loose, so you have the confidence that chances are good you will be able to save it, just as long as you don't get too, uh, bow and loop duke on it. How is that not a 1x? Take it easy on the tires while we're driving. And the corner is fine just as long as I drive it properly. Yeah, I found Dawn Forest should be helping right there. Or the stiffer springs, which allows 
front down force to just be more responsive. More open corners like that. Takes a few milliseconds less just to change direction of the screen a little bit stiffer. Because they don't sag as much, they don't have as much uh, movement and the rate they just move is quicker as well. The distance they travel and the rate they travel but speed up. Which makes for more responsive steering. Or a more responsive feel. Now you do it too much and it can start to make the car feel all nervous and skittish. It's fun. I just I'm gonna say every time I get sideways. Keep going. Left side. Left side. Clear. Yeah, that's kind of my fault with that guy is being a nuisance. So I don't feel bad. Hello. <clears throat> oh no, I'm not completely sold on that adjustment I just did. So can't take the springs down uh, 50 pounds. And, uh, 50 pounds. <sighs> Can give myself some more rake, too. Alright, let's see. See if softening it up a little bit just gives it that really sweet feeling I want. It's hard to get that really sweet feeling when you're this hot of weather, though. Drive it like I would in a race, nice and smooth. Just got a little too much dirt there. That bump like was nothing. That felt sweet. Ooh, it's pretty smooth through there. I mean, it hits some bumps, but it's a smoother action. At least that lap it was. Cars fun. Way too fast, Wilbur. 
Look at the comeback though. So ugly, not even paying attention. Again, too fast, I was thinking about work. <laughs> it's not as frequent when I start, but it still pops in when my brain goes off for a split second. Daydreaming again. There you go. Oh, better when I'm paying attention. The hardest thing for me not to do is induce a slide after I come out of that other slide for <laughs> the next corner. Optimal's getting down to 29.2, it's probably been there for a while. Goes over that curb. It's just a good feeling. Like when I'm trying to tune a car to go over bumps and stuff, I'm looking for that feeling and get out of that curb. You might go over it. It's that real simple up down. That's all the suspension does. No bouncing, no extra movements, just up down. One time. 
Oh, we're out of time? Oh, ho! Uh, that was probably just on my screen there. hit the wall. Uh, how's that car doing again? Uh, what do you think it needs? Well, might be alright, Chad. I think this is a good little uh, compromise on the springs. Good news is he drove in just hard I did, so <laughs> he had the same loss as I did. Oh, up down. See what I'm talking about? Up down. That's what that's what's all it should be. Up down. <laughs> oh, way too fast. Yeah, ride it out. What happens this fourth final? Best lap. Let's go jump something. This track's good for jumping. Another good session, Nathan. That was fun. Oh, let's see if we can land the backside. Land it. Oh, over jumped it. Hit the flats. <laughs> Miscalculated my angle there. It's alright. Oh, I see a wall ride in my future. Yeah, buddy! Oh, too bad they put that guard row there. That's no fun. Oh! Oh, no! Did my calculations wrong on that one. I think I just barely clipped that K rail. Oh, denied. <laughs> denied. All right, that's a fun track just to mess around on. A lot of jumps. Cool if we had like a Humvee. All right, guys, almost saved this as V4. Sometimes why I skip setups when I upload them on the forums. I'll do a session like this, which is, well, it's only an hour and ten minutes, but a little bit longer, and I'll make progressions, you know, find something's good, save it, but I think that was, uh, put down some pretty good laps there in that last little set, so we'll leave it there, and, uh, call it a day. All right, see you guys another time.